Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you and try to teach you some aspects of assessment of the vertebral column, as in a spinal assessment. It probably would make sense to have watched some other videos I've done before you suddenly jump into this one, um, because I do talk about the motion of the spine, or I do talk about a type 1 and a type 2 dysfunction, yeah, and things like that. But um, if, we, if, if I basically discuss a type 2 dysfunction, maybe before I get to type 2, maybe what I should say is about a type 1. So a type 1, so if you've got a vertebral column here and we've got what we call a neutral spine, according to Harrison Fryer from 1918, he says that if we have a neutral spine where the facet joints are not closed or not open, they are idling between the two and we side bend, the side bend into the right induces rotation to the left and is known as a type 1 mechanics, and that's normal. When you walk and when you run, you want the type 1, you want the two anomalies rotating in the sacrum, and that dries the lumbar, which dries the thorax, which dries the arms, to allow you to ambulate normally. What we don't want is a dysfunctional pattern of type 2. What that means is type 2 can either get fixed in extension, closed, or fixed in flexion, open. But more than likely, they're not just in extension, they're in extension with a side bending, and a rotation component, or they're in a flexion with a rotation and side bending component. So you don't want to be fixed in that position or fixed in this position. And that's what the talk will be about. When we assess the spine, ideally we will assess in three positions. We'll ask a patient to sit neutral, okay, or as best they can, and we will place our thumbs on the transverse processes or as, as close we, as we can get. And then we'll ask the patient to extend, and then we'll ask a patient to flex. And then depending on what you perceive with your palpatory awareness of the thumbs will depend on what you might come up with the, the hypothesis. Because to use the word diagnose is almost incorrect, okay? So we, we're hypothesizing yeah, what we believe the vertebral position to be in. So let's just focus a little bit on, on the type two. Now, so is either gonna be fixated in an extended closed position or fixated in a flexed open position, okay? So the facet joint is either gonna be back closed or fixed open. If it's fixed closed, we'll call it an ERS left or an ERS right. So think of those letters, ERS extension rotation side bend in left or extension rotation side bend into the right. And if it's fixated in open, it's called an FRS to the left or an FRS. So that's flexion, rotation, side bend in left, or flexion, rotation, side bend into the right. So we've either got an ERS left, or an ERS right, or an FRS left, or an FRS right. Let's look at the first picture. Very complex, okay, very complex, so I apologize for that, but I've already given you the dysfunction here. So just have a look at this. I'm already telling you that the vertebral position, let's say for instance we say that is T4 and that is T5, okay? Still T4 and 5, T4 and 5. But these are the three positions here. So the dysfunction is ERS on the left. So basically I'm saying that T4 inferior facet is fixed on T5 superior facet on the left hand side in here. You can see that we've got a neutral position, an extension position, and a flexion position. Let's say for instance we ask a patient to start in extension. We place our thumbs lateral to the transverse process, about 2.5 centimeter, give or take, lateral. And if you notice on the top picture, the letter L means they are level, okay? The thumbs are symmetrical. When you ask a patient to go from extension to neutral, what you notice is that, you notice that the left side becomes shallow, S, and the right side becomes deep. You notice that the thumb on the right seems to travel further away from you. And if you ask a patient to go into further flexion, you notice that the left side stays even more shallow or prominent, and the right side goes even further away. You'll notice that this facet looks open, this one is closed. So this one cannot open because it is fixed in a closed position. So the ERS left is T4 is fixed closed on T5. So you can see what happens in that position because the best answer would be they would be level or symmetrical in each picture. And if you see asymmetry, the idea is, is trying to work out what's going on. The next one is the opposite. So in this case, we've got an ERS to the right, 
Again, T4, T5 is fixed closed, closed, closed. But again, if you start in extension, you don't have to, you can start in any position. If you start in extension, both facet joints are closed, but when you go into flexion, the right facet cannot open, but the left side can. So as you bend in forward, like this, this side cannot open, so it does this. This side becomes more prominent, this side becomes deep. So this is more shallow, this is deeper, and as you ask the patient to flex, this side is, stays shallow or prominent, and this side stays deeper. Okay, so that would indicate an ERS to the right. Not so easy the next two. Now this is an FRS, so look at the dysfunction. So it's fixed in a flexion, rotation, side bending to the left hand side. Look at the picture where they are symmetrical, okay? Look at the bottom picture. Level, level, and we're in flexion. Both facet joints are open, you see that? So what this means is it's fixed open and it cannot close. And it cannot close, so it's fixed to the left hand side. So if you could look at this one, so we've asked the patient to flex and the thumbs are level. But as you've asked them to go into flexion, okay, to extension, to extension, the vertebra is fixed to the left, but it is the right side facet but cannot close. So as they go into closure, this left side is able to close here, but the right side cannot close. So it stays open. So an FRS to the left means it is flexed to the left, but it is the opposite facet joint that is fixed in an open position. So whereas the picture before, in extension, they were level. So that would be the key. In extension, you notice there is an obvious deep side in extension. Whereas with the earlier picture, there was an obvious shallow side in flexion. Look at the next one. So this is an FRS to the right. And again, if you ask them to start in flexion, they are level. And then from flexion, you ask them to go to neutral, to extension. And you notice that the left side stays deep and the right side stays shallow. So this indicates that is an open fixed facet on the left side, even though it is flexed, rotated side bent to the right hand side. Have a look at these, okay? This is a little idea, yeah, like a little mnemonic. In flexion, so if you flex and the thumbs, there is a shallow side, it simply means it's fixed closed on the shallow side. In extension, if there is a deep side, it means it is fixed in an open position. So that could be something you could use for that. Let me give you an example. This is a neutral position, so a neutral position here. So what you find is there is a shallow side, there is a deep side. So you don't know if this side is fixed back closed or this side is fixed forward open. So now you ask the patient to flex and you notice that it stays shallow and stays deep. So now she's flexed, so there is a deep side but a shallow side in extend, sorry, in flexion, thoracic flexion. So in flexion, there is a shallow side but there's a deep side here, okay? And then vice versa. Come on, technology. If you go into extension, they are level. So when you ask a patient to extend, so when you ask a patient to close, they are happy to close because they are in that position. So what do you think the dysfunction is? Just think about it for a second. So in extension, they are level. Okay, and in flexion, there is a shallow left and a deep right. So as they are flexing, if the vertebra is happy to open, they will become symmetrical, but because there is an asymmetry, it is naturally the left side that cannot open, so it must be fixed closed. So it would be a ERS to the left. Okay, so the dysfunction was a ERS to the left, the left facet joint was fixed in a closed position. Or the left inferior facet of T4 was fixed in a closed position on a superior facet of T5. Either way, it's still an ERS to the left. Just recap on the picture. So the dysfunction in extension, they are level, but in flexion, we have a shallow side. Remember the mnemonic? In flexion, if there is a shallow side, it means it is fixed in a closed position. 
And I'll go through this quite quick, so I do apologize. And you can watch it time and time again, and hopefully it eventually sticks. Now, the lumbar. So let's look at the lumbar. Let's say L5 or L4. Again, neutral position. So now there is a shallow and there's a deep side. Okay, this thumb goes further, this stays shallow. So again, you don't know this is closed or this is opened. You ask the patient to flex, and now the thumbs now become level. Okay, so when you flex, so they now are able to open. They are symmetrical. When you ask a patient to extend, like the sphinx position, what you notice now is that it is a shallow side on the right, but a deep side on the left. So they're trying to extend, but obviously one side cannot extend. Why? Because it might be open. So what do you think is happening now? So we know it's fixed in flexion, so it is a FRS to the right. So L5S1, so it means the left facet joint was fixed in an open position, whereas the earlier picture was fixed in a closed position. Or the left inferior facet of L5 was fixed in an open position on a superior facet of S1. Still an FRS to the right. Just to recap on the picture, have a look. So the difference is, is that in flexion, the thumbs are level, but in extension, in extension where you ask the joints to close, one side cannot close, so it stays open. So naturally in extension, the deep side is the side that's fixed open. I don't talk to you about um, fixing the facet joint. Um, I do have some videos on that that you're more than welcome to watch. Um, I probably have gone through this a little quicker than I normally would, but in class, yeah, then they obviously would record, yeah, but on YouTube, yeah, then you're more than welcome just to, to watch time and time again till eventually you might find it sticks in there. But you have to find yourself people to practice on, yeah, patients, just to go through these three positions. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the talk.